How important is the cover letter, and what should I consider as I write the cover letter? The cover letter can be very important with regard to giving the editor an idea of how important this work is. Typically, uh, the cover letter is read just before the article itself is, is looked at uh, before review. And some of the things that the editor is looking for is uh, the context for the work. Uh, what is the significant finding? What is it that this work has done which then enables others in the field? Uh, why is it that this particular audience, uh, for our, in our case the audience for ACS Nano, would be particularly interested in this work? And uh, in that cover letter, if you're able to encapsulate that briefly, uh, then it can be very, a very effective tool for helping the editor determine not only whether or not it's appropriate for the journal, but who the reviewer should be. The most important thing for the cover letter is to inform the editor what the major point or points of the paper are. In other words, what is it that the community will learn from this paper that we did not already know? And this will help uh, in the assignment of the associate editor, it will help in the assignment of the reviewers. In fact, uh, it will help very much in the decision to send the paper out for review or not. So the cover letter is a very important part of the submission. It's what you can use to really tell the editor and the editorial team you know, why the paper is important, why it should, should be in the journal, and uh, various aspects. And you can sort of say it in a more casual language than you can say in the manuscript. You can really explain why. Why do you think uh, this work was, was important and novel and interesting? So you should really put a lot of effort in the cover letter. I know it's sort of the last part after you've done all the work and written the manuscript and there's a temptation to just kind of, oh, just write it real quick and turn it in. But, but really spend a lot of time on that last, that last part and spend a lot of time on the cover letter. Yeah, so, sometimes the cover letter uh, will repeat the points of the abstract. Sometimes it's just copied verbatim and that's not a good idea because they already have, the editor already has the abstract and, and the conclusion. So you can, write, you can put the same points uh, written a different way or you can put entirely new points. You can talk about the field and the development of the field and why this is significant uh, development in the field if that didn't make it into the paper. So I would encourage even different points or more differently stated points than what's in the paper itself. I think the cover letter is very important because the cover letter uh, sort of provides a context and a basis for the work and why it should be published in the journal to which it's submitted. Uh, there are parts of the cover letter that may in fact uh, overlap with uh, the introduction or the introductory paragraph. Uh, I think it, it's uh, very valuable to find out uh, why the work was done and uh, what was accomplished and what makes it new and different. And that can be summarized in the cover letter. The cover letter is also a place where uh, authors can specify reviewers. And uh, I think that that is very important as well. Uh, I'm a great believer as, a, as an editor in the peer review process. And that the peer review process strengthens the quality of the science that's published. Therefore, it's important that we have reviewers who are expert in the area of the work because they help to strengthen the science. So authors should consider very seriously who they suggest as reviewers. These reviewers need to be truly competent in this specific area of the research. And, uh, we hope that that gets specified in the cover letter. How should I go about selecting a journal to submit my work? Uh, when you're first uh, putting together your paper, you should consider who your audience should be for that work. Uh, and you should then think about uh, whether or not the journal you're thinking about fits that audience. So if you're really writing a paper that you think appeals to synthetic organic chemists and you want that group of people to learn about and hear about the system that you've generated, then you want to look for journals that really uh, attract those readers. However, if you're looking for a, a much broader audience in the field of chemistry, then you should think about who appeals to that broader audience. So in all cases, think about who your audience should be. You should also think about the level of significance of the work that you've done. 
Everything that we do is important, but there are different levels of significance. Sometimes we're following up on a big idea that we reported earlier. In that case, it may not be appropriate to go to uh, the top line journal. It may be more appropriate to go to the journal that really serves the field in reporting um, advances uh, that are very specific to that field. So uh, when selecting a journal, you got to think about um, the audience and what kind of a paper it is. There's really sort of, I think of it as two criteria. There's sort of brief letters that are reporting something really novel but and some new and exciting result that you haven't really done all the detailed work yet. And then there's longer articles that sort of get all the detail and, and uh, really complete the work. So you need to sort of ask yourself, is this more of a letter or an article? And then ask yourself the audience. Is this something that everybody will want to see? So I need to send this to a, a, uh, a, a wide audience journal? Or is this really something for the specialists, so I should send it to more of a, a topical journal? So you have to consider um, who the audience should be uh, in the sense that maybe you have a result that's the biggest advance in the past decade in a field, but maybe it's only interest of interest to the specialists in the field. So you should still uh, go to the topical journal, and it'll still be widely read and have a big impact on the field. It, just because it's, it's a significant result doesn't always mean the whole world uh, wants to read it. So I usually try to really think about that. If I have something that's really specific, I, I go with the, the specific journal and, and it all works out.